There being none, member statement. The member for Prince Edward Hastings. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday, we lost a hockey legend. For anyone who grew up watching hockey in this country, Jean Beliveau stood as a monument to the game at its very best. There's only one big Jean Beliveau. Over the years, he came to personify the heights of character and heart in his sport, while doing so for the franchise that dominated it, and I say that as a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. Rising above the petty jealousies that are too often directed at dominant teams, fans of all stripes gave Beliveau only the highest regard and esteem. In this regard, in the pantheon of sport, he's matched only by Joe DiMaggio. Jean Beliveau is remembered almost more for his unmatched class and leadership off the ice than he is for his play. That's quite a statement for the guy who to this day is the all-time leading scorer for the most storied franchise in hockey history. Yesterday, a quote from former teammate Ray Jean Ull was the quote of the day at NHL.com. When I came on the team in 1970-71, I came in the room and I said, hi, Mr. Beliveau. He said, look, don't call me Mr. Beliveau. We're going to play together. You can call me Jean. I always had a problem getting his name to be Jean. For me, it was always Mr. Beliveau. I had the chance on numerous occasions to meet Jean Beliveau. Uh, once when he was doing his book tour, he signed a book for my dad, who is a big Jean Beliveau fan, and uh, several times I've interviewed him in my previous job as a radio broadcaster. Losing Jean Beliveau was a loss for more than Habs fans, Mr. Speaker. Losing Jean Beliveau is a loss for the country. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statement, the member for London Fanshawe. Good afternoon, Speaker. Today, I am honoured to take this opportunity to acknowledge a very special woman in my riding who has devoted her life to helping others. With tomorrow being International Volunteer Day, I feel it's imperative to acknowledge Bella Leach and her many contributions. This year, Bella Leach received a Volunteer Service Award from the Province of Ontario, honouring over 50 years of dedicated service to St. Joseph's Healthcare in London. As a young girl, Bella dreamed of being a nurse. So when she was old. So when she was older, volunteering at the hospital seemed like a natural match. Bella has volunteered in many capacities within the hospital, always giving everything she could to help people she saw going through difficult times. An accomplished artist who works in many mediums, including po pottery, stained glass, embroidery, doll making, and many more. Bella has always loved to share her talents with those around her. At the hospital, she would crochet multicolored butterflies to adorn the incubators of newborn infants, as well as make finger puppets for young children and soft dolls for children to cuddle before and after surgery. Always wanting to give more, Bella also volunteered with other patients in the hospital. She helped on the inpatient floors, assisted patients with walking, eating, or personal care, all the while providing friendly and encouraging smi smile to everyone she met. Bella's passion and commitment to helping others is an inspiration to me and to all those who have privilege of, the, of meeting her. I would like to thank Bella on behalf of all those she has helped in the past 50 years and the years to come for her kindness and generous spirit. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member for Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. My riding of Cambridge is built on a foundation of manufacturing, and I rise today to speak about one company in particular which exemplifies the industrial heritage of my community. Babcock & Wilcox Canada's Cambridge facility was established in 1844 and has grown from a small foundry manufacturing industrial machinery to a world leader in the design, engineering, manufacture, construction and service of steam, steam generation equipment. For over 170 years, Babcock & Wilcox has been a staple of Cambridge's manufacturing sector. Today, they employ over 650 people at their Cambridge facility. Speaker, last Thursday in Cambridge, I was pleased to be on the factory floor to see a, a signing of a long-term master service agreement between Babcock and Wilcox and Bruce Power. This agreement, which President John McQuarrie called one of the biggest service contracts they've ever signed, will provide an anticipated value of over $300 million and represents more than 100 new jobs at the Cambridge facility. Speaker, I'm always pleased to stand in this House and highlight the robust manufacturing companies that we have in Cambridge and to speak about the positive success and growth in my community. As a matter of fact, advanced manufacturing in Cambridge has, advanced by an, has uh, grown by 4 per cent in the last couple of years. It was wonderful for the employees to hear so much praise for their high-quality workmanship. Thank you. Thank you. 
The member for Dufferin Caledon. Thank you so much, Speaker. I'd like to take this moment to speak of the tremendous loss of lacrosse great Terry Sanderson. Terry Sanderson passed away on Thursday, November 27. Terry was an icon in the lacrosse world in Dufferin Caledon, Ontario, nationally and internationally. His presence will be missed by the entire National Lacrosse League. The commissioner, sorry, the commissioner of the NLL, George Daniel, said, quote, Terry Sanderson was a giant in the sport, and he was absolutely right. As a player, coach, and executive, Terry's influence on the game was instrumental. His successes included a national championship, three senior B titles, two man cups, and three Minto cups. But more than these successes, since 1972, Terry turned the game of lacrosse into a lifelong passion. He inspired hundreds of players, coaches, and fans throughout his career. He was an obvious choice for the first inductee of the Orangeville Sports Hall of Fame in 2005 because of his legacy with Orangeville Northman as a player and coach. He will also be greatly missed by his current team, the Toronto Rock. Those who knew Terry understood his passion for the game. A former teammate described him best in our local newspaper as Mr. Lacrosse. I would like to offer my deepest sympathies to the Sanderson family for the sudden and tragic death of Terry Sanderson. He will be missed. Thank you. Member statement, the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. One of the most beautiful things about Queen's Park is the ever-changing art and culture on the walls and in the halls. Right now, visitors to Queen's Park can enjoy the incredible art of young Ontarians being showcased through the Youth Arts Program that was launched in 2012. As we know, I am coming to the Legislature by way of the classroom, where youthful expression is always on display. Last year, my intermediate students had the opportunity to participate in an Ontario Arts Council program called Art Smarts. Art Smarts partners local artists and educators, and the goal is to reach all learners. Students can be engaged and be creative in exciting new ways. My students worked with local photographer and artist Colin Burwell, and I am pleased to be able to welcome Colin to Queen's Park today. Colin came to our school and took photos to create a piece of art. He captured not only the students, but their own creative representation of what hope looks like in their world. He shared not only their messages, but gave voice to children from an underprivileged community with important things to say. Together, they created a striking canvas of black and white images of themselves and their messages. This canvas at Glen Street Public School in Oshawa hangs as a tribute to hope, creativity and resilience. There is also a canvas that hangs in my office here at Queen's Park. It is both a beautiful piece of art and an anchor to the important reasons we are all here, the hopeful future of our province. My door is always open in the office. Come visit, come see my students and appreciate their enduring optimism and hope. And as we spend time here at Queen's Park, let's remember to take the time to appreciate the art, history and rich stories that surround us. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, last week, I had the privilege of travelling to Windsor on behalf of Minister Chan to attend two regional ministers' employers' tables. While I was there in this great city, I had the opportunity to visit a number of organizations working to integrate newcomers to our province. In Windsor, I saw the incredible work going on at the Mason Educational Centre, which is an adult learning centre for the Greater Essex County District School Board. I also had the pleasure of meeting the member from Windsor Tecumseh's wife, who is a school board trustee there. The Mason Centre runs adult non-credit English as a second language program for recent immigrants to Ontario, offering these newcomers an opportunity to learn a language, to earn a language certificate that can be used for their federal citizenship applications. One of the students at the Mason Centre told me that it was an excellent school because here the teachers teach from the heart. I also visited the Windsor campus of the Collège Boreal and toured their impressive facility. The college, which supports mainly newcomers from Congo, Haiti, Burundi, Rwanda and Syria, provides adult language classes, settlement assistance, employment programs and bridge training. 
I heard from one staff and clients the importance of this kind of one-stop shop, where new immigrants can learn English or French, get guidance on opportunities for employment, and even participate in practice interviews, all while their kids are in the daycare centre down the hall. They're also able to meet others who are all experiencing the same thing. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud that the government is funding and continues to fund these crucial programs, and I look forward to seeing more newcomer settlement agencies across the province. Thank, Thank you. you. The member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. And I won't forget you now. Got, you got her. Great. Thanks. Mr. Speaker, I'm uh, proud to help celebrate uh, Wildlife Conservation Day. Wildlife Conservation Day promotes the conservation and protection of threatened species, specifically elephants, rhinos, and tigers. It raises public awareness regarding the harmful security, economic, and environmental effects of wildlife poaching and trafficking. Many populations consider some charismatic species as part of their natural heritage, and these species often provide revenues from tourism that only contribute to local economies, but also to the continuity of conservation efforts. However, over-exploitation over puts the survival of many wildlife species at risk. Once these wildlife species have been wiped off the earth from their native towns and villages, these areas suffer terrible damages and experience decline in their economies by becoming irrelevant wildlife tourism destinations. Not only is wildlife being killed, by, but park rangers are also getting caught between lines of fire by poachers that they're trying to stop. Once a poacher does escape, though, they traffic unscreened wildlife and wildlife parts across the world, which increases the risk of human health pandemics. Therefore, the effects of wildlife poaching and trafficking from every, affects everything from biodiversity to park rangers to citizens across the world. This global occasion, World Wildlife Conservation Day, provides everyone with the opportunity to learn more about wildlife conservation and to be part about the solution to wildlife in our future. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member's statement. The member for Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, last Saturday I attended an event in my riding to celebrate the incredible contributions made by parents, coaches, referees, and other volunteers associated with the Milton Soccer Academy. The academy was originally founded in September 2004 as a non profit organization by Uwe Samstag Schnock, Dolly Pollock, and Michael Walter. It started with a small group of 24 players aged 9 to 11 and has since expanded to catered to an array of boys, girls, men and women in a variety of skill levels and age groups. Indoor soccer is even available through the winter. My kids have been involved with this academy over the years, and it has since become an important part of our growing community in Halton. It keeps us feeling young, healthy and active. But perhaps most importantly, it brings people together. Out on the field, we build new relationships, learn about teamwork and make new friends. That night was really about celebrating the people behind the scenes, the people who have selflessly volunteered their time and their talents so that people can have the chance to get out, compete, and play a sport they love. Mr. Speaker, making a difference through volunteering starts with one simple act, the act of deciding that you care and that you want to have a positive impact on your community. And I think we should all be proud, Mr. Speaker, to live in a province where the spirit of volunteerism is so strong. So I want to thank you for having us uh, speak here today, and I want to thank the volunteers that were there that evening for coming out and showing their support for a wonderful club. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> member statement. The member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, four Waterloo Region residents were recognized by His Holiness Pope Francis with papal honours for their remarkable contributions to our community. They are among 15 people in our diocese to receive this very distinguished honour. Joe and Stephanie Mancini, whom I've known for a very long time, were each awarded the Benny Medenti Medal for the Working Centre. Mr. Speaker, this is a very unique facility in downtown Kitchener that was founded by the Mancinis more than 30 years ago. They provide a daily soup kitchen, housing, a job search resource center, used computers, secondhand furniture, used bicycles for those in need, and many other programs all targeted at eliminating poverty. The Benny Merenti Medal was also awarded to palliative care specialist Dr. Donna Ward for her commitment to dying patients. She has worked with a number of hospitals and local organizations advancing palliative care programs, and she has also served at the Grand River Regional Cancer Care Center from 1989 to 2009. 
And finally, Sherry Gunta received a papal honor for her work with affordable housing and for her profound contributions to the National Council of the Catholic Women's League. Mr. Speaker, I am so honoured to represent a riding that is home to such caring constituents, and I hope that their contributions to my community will inspire others there to do great things as well. Thank you. Thank you. Reports